Well, welcome to Signature Style Saturday, a special St. Patrick's Day slash Easter edition. And I have been um, one happy fool. I have been styling like crazy with all of the thrift store finds that we got last week. Most of them are occasional kinds of things, entertaining kinds of things. We are going to talk about what I am reading, what I am watching, what I am listening to. And then I've got a special project. Well, let's just say it's topiary related. <laughs> well, what do you say, guys? Let's do it. Well, this is vignette number one. I am styling the blonde wood or raw wood crate that I got at Goodwill for all of $3.99. Yes, you guys, I do intentionally leave the price tags on after I style them when I show you these videos because I want you to know how much I spent on these various things and that indeed, yes, uh, my veracity is important to me, that indeed, yes, I truthfully did get this get this at goodwill okay so i there's so many different ways i thought about styling this this in and of itself would have made a cute easter crate if not an easter basket but i thought how fun if i want to serve mimosas on the social patio that i can just put together this little kit pretty much complete with my centerpiece and everything. So what did I do? I didn't even have to put a liner in it or anything. I got an old, well this actually, I love this color of Kelly Green, but this used to have a candle in it. I saved the container and then I just put a bouquet of asters in it for all of $2.99 from Homeland. Then because I like to serve my mimosas in let's just say some crystal or glass flutes. So I have four glass flutes for the mimosas here in the crate and they are wedged in between these gaps in the crate itself. So that makes them secure when I move them from one location to another. You may recall that last week, Stuart and Leah, do you remember, do you guys out there remember that I had on a little apron that had roosters and things on it. Well, these are the matching napkins that I referred to that my friend Jenny made. They are all pressed and ready to go and they are situated and styled right inside the uh, champagne flutes. Then I've got a couple of small little bottles of orange juice in here so that it's like a kit and it's ready to go. Now pretend, if you will, that this was a bottle of champagne, but I don't have any champagne yet, so this bottle of sparkling rosé will have to do in a pinch just for um, styling purposes. And then I got some of these thrift store bowls that I got, uh, gosh, that was on our, our thrifting adventure time before last, I think, um, and I love them. And then I have them for my guests in case they want one of these little peach streusel bites that I also just got at the grocery store and I've got them styled in a former thrift store find and I kind of I really like the way the whole thing comes together I think it looks very very springy this will be really fun to carry out to the social patio on a beautiful morning but it would also make a really fun surprise I think maybe um, hostess gift or if you're going to visit someone, I think this would make a fun, just a little bit, uh, let's just say above and beyond your traditional gift for the hostess when you go and visit someone. So this is my styling vignette number one. Let's move on to number two. Well, I think one of the reasons that I am so drawn to all of this glassware, particularly the glassware that is elevated, it's footed, it looks a little bit more elegant, is because it reminds me of that scene in the movie It's Complicated, that Nancy Myers film, and after the party, Meryl Streep and Steve Martin, they walk into her bakery and they turn on the lights, and there is just so much glistening, sparkling, 
shimmering kind of bakery ware that it is just magical. And I think you can kind of in a way, and a mini level, replicate that same thing at home in the arrangements and in the vignettes that you make. And I think that's one of the reasons that I love all of these thrift store finds I got recently because not only were they just embarrassingly inexpensive, but they are so, so dramatic. Now I showed you, I think, uh, I can't remember when I showed you. Last week, maybe this gorgeous footed glass vase that is even more glorious this year with all of these oriental lilies in it. They have really opened up. I have removed all of the anthers and the filaments because I didn't want to get any of that pollen on anything. And by the way, one of you pointed this out, so you get all of the credit. And she said, when you do it, you can do it you know, with a Kleenex or something. But the other thing is, if you get it, get it on your marble, if you get it on clothing or whatever, you don't want to wipe it away with your hands because the oil on your skin will actually set it. You want to wipe it away with um, with something else, like with a cloth or a Kleenex or something like that. Um, but I have removed all of the pollinating, um, pollinating filaments inside this, and I think it really looks gorgeous. And then I use the tiny bubble glass or knob glass vase that I got there also, and I put in a shorter double version of those same lilies, which again, one of you pointed out to me very correctly that these don't have those kind of pollinating filaments in them. So the anthers don't have any of that pollen. So they're even easier to style, but I love, I love the kind of contrast between the single blooms and the double blooms. And then I added, and by the way, all of these are from Trader Joe's. I added some Star of Bethlehem, and I think it's really, really beautiful. And not only that, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. Um, I think for bang for your buck per stem, you get your money's worth for lilies practically more than maybe any other bloom that you could get this time of year. They just, they are just so long lasting. Now, another thing you guys commented on, this is all about your comments. I love the fact that a number of you noticed these almond windmill cookies in here. These are a huge favorite at my house. They're wonderful with a cup of tea later in the afternoon. And um, a couple of you commented that you had forgotten about them and you were gonna go out and buy some. So it's kind of, um, oh, it's just a little trip down memory lane, but I think I think the entire uh, glassware look in triplicate is really stunning. I think it would be beautiful for the Easter holiday, for um, really any kind of spring buffet, banquet that you're going to hold. And then I put it over the top, I think, with an element from my own garden, and that is that I cut some of those Anne Magnolia stems that I was forcing, and you can see that some of the leaf is starting to come out now in that beautiful grayish green that kind of echoes the color in the lily pods. And then, I love this, you guys. Look at how that flower right here in bud and right there in bud is the perfect color echo to the interior of these lilies. And I love the fact that one replicates the other. So the whole thing is really cohesive. It's the tone on tone color palette that I love more than anything. And I think it's really, really spectacular. So here's my question of the day. Tell me what you think. Do you like this ensemble um, in, in pinks and whites? Or would you have done it in, in a different color, in a different tableau? Would you have done it in yellows? Would you have done it in blues? Would you have done it in lavenders? Whatever color palette would you use in your tableau vivant?
Well, you ask and we respond. So many of you wanted to know how Leah tied her scarf that she had on the other day. Where were we? Thrifting. We were, we were out we were thrifting, thrifting, okay, and how she tied her scarf. So we thought we would have her give us a little tutorial in case you wanted to add this skill to your personal style repertoire. Okay, take it away, Leah. Okay, this is so easy to do. I believe it's called the buccaneer tie. The buccaneer? Tie. Tie. Okay. It's probably harder to undo than to do it. Um, so basically, I just took my scarf. Okay, can and you it's take, a, yeah, take it all the way off? It's a large scarf. Okay. And it's actually, I folded it down one more time. So, okay, so I fold it down just to make it. It's a triangle, and then it's one a triangle, more. yep. And then I just fold it down because I didn't want too much fabric. Okay. And then I just wrap it once and wrap it twice, and you tie it over itself. So this part I might fold down a little bit and then tuck it and tie it on top of the triangle. And then you kind of just zhuzh it. Zhuzh it up, tie it twice. So it's a knot, fold this down a little bit and then just kind of play with it until you get it where you like it. You but know, it's really I, just tied on top of it. Yeah, and I would leave it up because I kind of like that yeah, look of, like a faux, that. of a faux turtleneck. But the other thing is, is I think this is how you, you so often see really in movies and things, yes. really stylish people that have um, almost like an ascot that's tied yeah. with their winter coat. Yes. And apparently that's how they do it. Yeah. So, okay, well, there you go. There is a really good style tip that is good for not only winter, but for spring as well. Yeah. Okay, Leah has to work for her treats, so she said that she would show us how to tie her scarf if she could get These are a, dangerous a Cadbury egg afterwards, and I said, or four. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think she took five. Mm -hmm. so, so there you go. Okay, well, it is a jungle around here. We have all sorts of wildlife visiting the parlor. Um, I started to do this segment, and I still will, on the fungus gnats that I have on my topiary. <laughs> But just as we were getting start started, Stuart looks down and goes, oh my gosh, there's a huge worm in here. And I said, well, don't kill it. And so um, he had to man up and he had to throw it outside into the garden because we do not waste a worm around here, do we? The early bird gets it. No, the early bird gets it, but, but <laughs> my, my heavy clay soil can use every worm it can, it can find. Okay, but I digress. Back to my tip, which is related to my topiary. So because these myrtle topiary have to be watered so frequently, and because I think I have mentioned more than once, if they ever dry out, it can be their doom. One of the downsides of that is that they are prone to fungus gnats. And I noticed some this morning, you can even see them crawling around the edge of just this one. I haven't noticed them in the others, but I am going to take some preventive measures and I'm gonna take some of these mosquito bits. And yes, we'll put a link below because these not only work in the garden against mosquitoes, but they also work in your house plants for fungus gnats. So I am taking a teaspoonful of these mosquito bits and I'm kind of working them in and around the juniper berries. And then I'll water them in. To get, did you see that one? That one just flew out. I don't know if our camera could catch that or not. But fungus gnats are really common this time of year in any of your house plants, and this is a way that you can deter them. So there is a little topiary tip from me, and that's use mosquito bits for the fungus gnats that may be uh, at home in your potted house plants. Well, here you go. Here is my outfit du jour from top to bottom. I have some lightweight, they almost feel like tin earrings on that my friend Jenny gave me many, many years ago. My top, if you are a long time viewer, you have probably seen this before. I think I got it sometime last year. I especially like to wear it in the spring. It is 100% cotton and I just love 
the circles on it. And in fact, I've gotten a number of these as gifts. It looks especially cute, I think, styled with white jeans or with leggings. Um, my britches are some thrifted Calvin Kleins that I've had forever. And then these are mustard yellow Mary boots you have seen before. So there you go. Have I forgotten anything? I think I got it. There you go. There's your outfit du jour. Well, as I said earlier, you ask and we answer. And I have intended to tell you guys about this for so long because I've gotten so many questions about it. I typically have this and it's thrown over the ottoman in front of my white linen chair kind of to protect it. This belonged to my mother-in-law. I'll kind of go like this so you can yeah, see the top. Like yeah, the top and the bottom. It is needle pointed. And what it is is a, a cover for a church kneeler. I'm not sure where she got it. She bought it at some kind of estate sale, but I absolutely love it. I love the motif. I love the nature inspired story that it tells. And I love needlepoint. And then it's just linen in the back, but it's kind of, it's kind of cushiony. And I think it looks beautiful cascading over the ottoman. And I also love it because the tones match my settee, my R house settee, I think just brilliantly. So I've intended to tell you guys about that for a long time and I have been remiss. Um, now, what I am reading. Um, so for in, in, I guess, recognition of International Women's Day, I intentionally went out and looked for some books. I love reading biographies and of women in particular. So there is one biography that was recommended to me a long time ago and I went back through my book list to find it. I have it reserved at the library and it is No One Gardens Alone about the gardener Elizabeth Lawrence, I believe. So that is kind of my serious book that I'm gonna be reading this week or as soon as I get it from my library. And then I was also going through my own personal library of garden books and I pulled this one out, Dig, Gardening from the Ground Up. I like it, you, you know, it is stock full of projects and great gardening tips and things. But you know why I really like it? Because it is just this wonderful, vibrant green. And it's so fun. And I think this would make an absolutely brilliant St. Patrick's Day gift. So I love that about it. But it's it's got all sorts of beautiful pictures. It's got some, like I say, some hands-on products or projects rather and tips. And it's just a really good reference book to have around. And and if nothing else, it makes you smile every time you look at it. And it's really a good price. It's not prohibitively expensive. Now, this third book kind of falls into my little life luxuries category. I think I have told you all that for a very long time, I wanted to get a guest book because I get so many visitors from around the country, from around the world, really, who just stop by to see the garden at the cottage. And I really wanted to record uh, from where everyone came. And so I finally did that. I may have told you a while ago that the Oklahoma City Museum of Art had a great sale the other day, and I got one of these on sale. And it is a wonderful Christian LaCoy guest book. I love the motif of it. Of it. I love the color palette and it's just, it's really beautiful. And I think it will be just a lovely way to record visitors who come by the garden in all of their varying personalities and harking, hearkening from around the country. And then I've got it styled here with one of these little thrift store finds that I will set a pen in when um, on, on primarily I'll have it out on the weekends, which is when I typically get so many visitors. And I love looking out the window. I can, I can sit here. This is my favorite chair this time of year. And I can look outside. Stuart, maybe we can get a, a glimpse of what's going on in the garden. I think it's really, really beautiful. And I can, I can see passers-by. And I can also see a glimpse of what is, what is starting to bloom this spring. So it's, it's fun for fun, fun, fun for me. And lastly, I am so excited, you guys. Um, this was my publisher's idea. And that was to do, they'd never done one before. And that was to come up with a boxed set 
of my books. Oh, and I, ta da! <laughs> and I'm so excited. I just got it this week. It is, the two books are encased in this beautiful gray linen like feel um, so cool. box. <laughs> it is. It's just, I feel so important. Um, and both of them are in that kind of telltale gray and I think it's just really I don't know I'm very very proud of it and I'm very proud that the publisher felt it was it was um worth doing and I I'm I like I say it I feel very special so this would be a great gift I think for Mother's Day for Easter for St. Patrick's Day and I have it proudly displayed here on my little chest, right by one of my beloved topiaries, one of my thrift store finds from a recent trip, and some sweet, sweet personalized matchbooks that my friend Michelle Cooperman made for me. And we're going to show you in a future episode how she did these. Um, well, they're actually not matchbooks. They are match boxes, and they are so dear and so, um, no, they're just, just so personal and special. And speaking of special, we are going to end this Signature Style Saturday with a very, very special performance that we came across on, was it TikTok? Uh, Leah found it, she sent it to me, and well, let's just say after she sent it, about four or five other people sent it to me. If you have not seen it yet, then boy, this is a treat for you. So you guys have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you tomorrow.